coming up, I'll show you how to keep your computer safe and secure, plus have a little bit of fun with port scanning on this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. What? Port scanning can be fun. All right, internet, you know what ports are, right? I'm not talking about the kind for boats. I'm talking about the kind for networking communications. I'll sum it up like this because really that's probably its own show, but ports are a software construct that an application will use to communicate through the host operating system and out over say like the internet or could even be your local network. For example, when you bring up your web browser and you go to jupiterbroadcasting.com, your web browser automatically assumes that you're gonna communicate over port 80 because an industry standards body has determined that all web servers will run on port 80. Certain exceptions apply. And so your web browser just assumes, all right, I'll just talk over port 80. What that really means is you can end up doing some reconnaissance work just by scanning a box and seeing what ports it has open for incoming connections. Additionally, you can flip that on its head, scan your own computer and see what it's listening for. Because really, shouldn't the computer only be listening for what you told it to? Should it be accepting any kind of incoming connection from anybody? That's why it's just good computer hygiene to audit your own computer from time to time. All right, but how do you do that exactly? Well, there's a great tool out there. In fact, it's such an awesome tool that Eagle Eye viewers might remember Trinity from the original Matrix movie actually used this to scan, uh, I think it was a power plant server and figure out what ports were open and then hack in through SSH. Nmap is one of these tools that I have used for so long that I consider it like a close companion. It's great for troubleshooting. It's great for security purposes. I'll, in fact, I'll cover a few of those in this episode. But Nmap is a free and open source tool that scans remote systems or large ranges of remote systems over the network and tells you all kinds of information about them. Now, why don't we start with just giving an audit of your own local computer? So I'll show you how to do that. Your first step is to fire up Nmap. So Windows users, you launch the GUI. Mac and Linux users, you go to the command line. And it's insanely easy to scan your own machine just type in nmap space localhost and there's some additional flags and stuff that I'll include in the show notes that you can include and there you go there's a report of everything that's open and listening on this computer now this computer is a bit of a mess because it's an editing machine that I, I beat on rather regularly but you can see here that uh, if I wanted to go Google any one of these port numbers I could determine what application is listening for an incoming connection and figure out if that should be running on my computer it's possible in fact it's very possible there could be something on that list that you didn't expect to see this could this could be an early indication of malware listening for incoming commands or just something silly like I don't know Dropbox or something. It really, it, it's all over the place. So just simply highlight the uh, port number here and then Google search and you can generally get a pretty good idea what it's, uh, what it's for. All right, that's simple enough. Let's kick things up a notch. Let's say you wanna do an audit of all of the computers on your network. Maybe you've got a rogue neighbor stealing your Wi-Fi or uh, you just kinda wanna take stock of where things are at. Nmap can scan your entire network and tell you which IP addresses are in use. That's a pretty simple command. And again, all of these commands too are in the show notes so you don't have to uh, click pause every few seconds to get them, but just type in nmap dash lowercase s uppercase p and then your IP range, in my case it's 10.1.10 and then dot star for everything after that and let it go. It'll come back with a report of every single IP address that it found. Okay, so let's say on this list of addresses that nmap has returned, there's a machine on there that you're not so positive is yours. Well, Nmap will help you figure this out by doing a few different things, along with the port scanning, because you can generally just kind of get an idea of what computer it is based on what ports it has open. Like, do all your computers have port 80, a web server? No, probably just your Linksys box or something like that. Nmap could also do OS fingerprinting and get you details about the operating system, and in some cases, even the hardware class. Check it out. Step one is to fire up old Nmap again. I'll include the command line in the show notes because it's kind of a, a mouthful to say out loud. And once you kick this off, give it a minute. When I ran the scan, it took a couple of minutes. So just sit back, go get yourself a cup of coffee. And then it returns all the information. And I can see here that this is a Windows box. Well, I don't have any Windows computers on my home network right now. So that must be that pesky neighbor. So I'll go knock on his door and say, look, buddy, I just printed this out. And I know this IP address with this Aubrey system is yours. Stay off my Wi-Fi. At which point the neighbor will reply, no problem. Why don't you put a password on it? and he'd be right. One of the things Nmap can't do, and this is really handy, like if you're trying to let in a website 
to your, say you have like a server at home that you've tried to open up a port on your router and it's not getting through. Nmap can't scan to see what is allowed in from the internet into your house because you're using it on your local network. You need to use a tool outside of your network to do that kind of audit. And I've got two I'm going to recommend. First up is good old Steve Gibson's GRC Shields Up. This tool is primarily built just to scan the system you're coming from and give you a report on all of the little things that your uh, router might be letting in or little data leaks that it might have. Another tool is Nmap Online. Now, I'm not positive this is affiliated with the Nmap project, but the thing about this tool is it lets you scan any IP address you want. You guys would never use that for any nefarious purposes, would you? But I'll tell you, it's, it's super useful if you're trying to start up an FTP site at home or some sort of web server and it's not getting in. You can use these tools to scan your router and see if the ports are actually open. And then you know if it's a router problem or a web server problem. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Now I have an extra bonus command in the show notes that will scan your network for any web servers you have running and identify all of them. I recommend you do that. You might be surprised what applications start up web services on your computer, and it's probably a good idea to shut those down. Also, I've got a preview for the topic I'll be covering next week. It's retro gaming, and it has a it's a soft I have a soft spot for this game, you guys. It was one of the first games where I played with a friend that we started playing around 5, 6, 7 p.m. in the evening, and then thought what was just a matter of hours later, looked up at the clock and realized it was 3 a.m. and we'd become completely sucked into this game. It's one of those first experiences I ever had in this game. It's got to be over 10 years old now, so we're going to have a special retro gaming edition of an in-depth look next week. I also want to hear your suggestions. Hit me up on any social network that you prefer to lurk. Just go over to bit.ly slash chrisfisher. I'll have links to those. Also, you can send your suggestions you can send your suggestions in over email. Just email me chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Also, be sure to go over to Jupiter Broadcasting and get links so you can uh, subscribe to the RSS feed and just get this dang show weekly when I release it. Then you don't even have to think about it. It's just auto-magical. It's like, boom! There's an in-depth look. I'll just watch that. You can be drunk. You could be hungover. You could be high. You could be dumb. It doesn't matter. You don't have to think about it. It just happens. And honestly, aren't some of us in one of those categories at some point? So you might as well just take care of it now. Besides, the world comes to an end in 2012. One less thing you need to worry about, I say. Just subscribe. Get the show weekly. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of An In-Depth Look, and I'll see you right back here next Saturday.